Welcome to the 1020 Legacy Way Passivals Apartments, owned and operated by the Whistler Housing Authority. This project is located in Whistler and was completed in 2019 and consists of 24 bedrooms on four floors over a level of parking. The overall shape of the building is fairly simple, as you can see with these long straight walls. The design started with modular units, then modified to accommodate various bin remixes. The simple form makes it ideal to use prefabricated panels. Using the BC Passville system, the walls have an effective R value of 45, the roofs of 98, and the floors of 71, ideal for Whistler's climate. The air barrier is taped interior OSB on the prefab panels and the concrete of the suspended slab. We did have some issues during some cold wet weather, so membrane was added as a safeguard. The project team rethought platform framing, so site assembly was like stacking Lego blocks, and air barrier continuity would always be on the inside. Less wood plates were required, which helped to reduce thermal bridging. One of the most prominent features of this project is this entry canopy. The structure is independent of the main building and hidden within these fertile walls, meaning no thermal bridging and a clean look. Another prominent feature is this staircase. Other than looking awesome, this stair is located on the exterior to gain both additional floor area and encourage residents to walk instead of using the elevator. There are also no balconies on this project, making the thermal bridging and air, de air tightness detailing a lot easier. At the parkade level, the transition to a concrete structure with fire rated assemblies and challenges to keeping the envelope well insulated and airtight. One solution was done by keeping this elevator lobby in and this vestibule out of the Passmos envelope. Within the parkade, spray insulation is provided on the underside of the suspended slab. This is in addition to the 12 inches of EPS foam insulation on top. The two layers of insulation reduce thermal bridging from structural components connecting at the top and bottom. A common concern with this sandwich slab approach is trapping water in the event of a flood such as from a broken washing machine. To solve this issue, a drain mat layer and a few ball valves are provided so water can escape. Here we have the certified passive house door. By VETA, the frame is made of solid pine, exterior insulation, and aluminum cladding, in addition to the standard triple glazing, triple gasket, and multi-point lock. This is an accessible threshold with an install psi value of 0.037 watts per meter Kelvin using the TOP thermal brake. The site is orientated on a 52 degree angle, making it less than ideal for dealing with solar shading. To effectively shade the high solar angles, exterior horizontal shades extend south, as we know the sun does not only move on a vertical plane. For the low solar angles, the initial design was to have the sliding perforated panels. But due to the engineering challenges of freeze-thaw cycle, Interior blinds were upgraded with reflective exterior coatings and mechanical cooling was provided. You will notice there are virtually no vents or penetrations on this building. On top of the attic are two grills for the intake and exhaust serving the centralized ERV unit. From there, the ducts extend over the corridor in the attic before branching down to serve the suites. The heating and cooling are partially provided through heat pumps utilizing the DES, or District Energy System, then to the ERV. The DES generates heat through the neighborhood sewage in a two-pipe closed-loop system. Or another way of thinking about it is an HRV, but with poop instead of air. The heat pumps are modular units that can be arranged in banks, allowing multiple units to act as a single machine. In addition, supplemental heating is provided through small electric baseboard heaters within the suites which you will see shortly. Inside the laundry room, we have coin-operated washers and dryers. Common practice is to have ductless dryers. However, since a coin-operated ductless heat pump condensing dryer is not readily available, these dryers vent to the outside. In lieu, makeup passive air is provided through this duct on motorized damper. Since the air is coming straight from the outside, Space heaters are used to keep this space warm. Starting from the entry, here is a basic rundown of a standard unit. The kitchen has an induction stovetop with a recirculating hood, complete with a built-in grease and carbon filter. 
Hidden within the kitchen wall bump out is the plumbing stack with two inches of pipe insulation. The windows beyond are similar to the door but function on the tilt and turn operations. Below that is the electrical baseboard for supplemental heating. This storage room helped create the simple form and the HVAC fl layout flexibility. Hidden in the storage room ceiling is a suite's React dampers for the ERV unit. For future projects, I would look into the option of having the access of the dampers on the corridor side. The final PHPP numbers are a heating demand of 13 kilowatt hours per meter squared, an air tightness of 0.15 ACH at 50 pascals, and a PER of 62 kilowatt hours per meter squared.